Welcome to the third and final part of our series on using Native Instruments form. And in this final video, we're going to take a closer look at the motion section, specifically focusing on the curve presets and the curve editor. And I think it's important to have a good understanding of how the curve editor and curve presets work in the motion section in tandem with the speed, because this is going to allow you to create rhythmic soundscapes, evolving pads, or gritty bass lines and leads. When you really understand how these controls work and how you can create your own curve presets to have the motion, the playback cursor move through you, this particular sample that you've chosen to create unique sounds. And as we talked about in the earlier, earlier videos, it's important to understand that when we start from the bottom here, we're starting playback of our cursor from the beginning of our sample. In this instance, I have this specific portion of the audio sample selected. So you can see when we come here, we start at the beginning and then jump to various places throughout the sample. And this kind of changes the rhythm of the sample that we have loaded. Or if you have a more monophonic sound, you can create unique textures. So just keep that in mind that in this display here, when we're starting at the bottom, we start at the beginning of our sample or whatever we have selected. And then as we move upward, if this were a straight ramp up, then at the top would be the end of the sample. So let's actually go to the sample select page and preview what sample that we have loaded really quickly. Okay, let's sample select to come back to the previous page. Now I don't have any processing on the sound page and on the effects. I just have uh, some of uh, frequency shaping, uh, filtering, some warmth, delay and reverb. So we haven't done anything drastic to shape the sound. Again, nothing is active in the sound page. If we come back to the sample and then I play this back, we can hear just by using a specific curve preset and adjusting the speed and syncing it with the DAW, we can get a completely unique sound from the original sample there. So I'll go ahead and play this back. Okay, and we can add a beat to this. Okay, so with a simple beat and one instance of form, we're on our way to creating a track. And of course, this may not be your type of music that you like, but I think it highlights just how much making changes to the curve preset or creating your own uh, curve within the curve editor and adjusting the speed can make huge changes to the sample that you start off with. Another thing that's important to keep in mind is that if you are going to load a sample that's very simple, say like a bell, like a one shot of a bell, and the sound trails off here, you'll really need to select that segment where the audio is if, if you're going to use these more involved curve presets, because otherwise you're going to move around to areas where there are, there isn't any sound and that's not going to work out for you. So let's go ahead and switch to another sample and start taking a look at the curve presets and the curve editor and how they work along with the speed section. Okay. So I've got a basic sample here. Let's again, come to the sample select and preview the sound. Mm -hmm. Very basic. Let's come back. And all of the parameters have been reset to their default state by clicking the reset sound and confirming that. But I am going to come to the sound and just take the volume up a bit for our additive oscillator just to add a little bit of low into this. And I'm also going to come to the effects page and just put a bit of reverb on this. Okay, so by default, when we initialize our parameters, we're going to start with a basic ramp up and we start playback at the beginning of our sample and move throughout the sample to the end. And if we come to the curve presets and we can see we can choose if we wanted to reverse the playback, then we can select this one here and we can see. And as you can guess, if we were to choose this one, we start playback from the beginning, go to the end and then reverse back to the beginning again. So let's select that. 
And as I mentioned, it's important to keep in mind that the speed and motion section are really gonna work together. So if you wanted to slow that down, we could take the speed down. Speeding up. Let's uh, actually activate the loop and I'm gonna set that to back and forth. Take the speed down a little bit. Okay, let's check out some more of the complex uh, curves. So here we have kind of a saw wave when we select that. We can click the arrows here to take to different pages. And if you notice that there's these overlays uh, in some of these images, and this basically represents a loop region. So since I activated the loop and we're doing back and forth, any of one of these that I select that has this overlay, it's going to loop back and forth in that particular region. So if I select that, let's close curve presets. Let's check out the other page here. So the particular type of curve preset that you choose is really gonna change the sound of your sample a lot, particularly if you have a sample that has more changes in the frequency and uh, more going on with it as we heard in that first example at the beginning of this video. So we've got three different pages of presets that we can choose from, but let's go ahead and move on to take a look at the curve editor. And this is an area where we can go about creating our own curves. And you can kind of get lost experimenting in the curve editor. Uh, let's actually come to curve presets, bring a basic ramp up in, come back to the curve editor. We can see our ramp up here. And since we have our loop on, this is gonna cycle back and forth. Now, if we wanna start creating our own curve, then we can start up in the upper left-hand corner and this drop down menu here, we have a bunch of different shapes that we can choose from. And the controls over to the right here are gonna change based on the uh, curve type that you select. So um, basically with the basic ramp up here, then we can adjust the shape of that to introduce a curve. So it's gonna speed up quicker at the end here. We can also flip that. We have volume. For the segment that we have active, we have, we can create a fade out. We can double click to take these parameters back to their default. And we have panning. And we have scale all and move all. And these are gonna apply more so to when you have multiple segments within the editor here. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But if I were to switch then, and let's add a bit more of a complex shape here. Now you can see that these controls, we have more that are active within the top area here. So, so we can adjust the shape, the phase, and the frequency is gonna allow you to add more of these shapes to the segment here. So as I move to the right, we can see we add more.
And if you notice, we have these vertical lines here. We have a grid in this window. So if we'd like to snap to the grid, we can activate that and then adjust here or pull that to the right. And you can see that now these are snapping to the grid. Now over to the left, we have some other buttons that are gonna allow us to add additional segments, remove them, split them, and merge them. I'm going to actually come back to a simpler shape here. Let's say the basic ramp up. Let's take the flip off and double click on shape to take that back to the initial state. So I'm gonna start in the center here. If we were to split, then it's going to split that and create two of equal length there. And we can tell when a segment is active by the white borders here. So if I were to click once, we can see that this one is then selected. And if I wanted to, we can pull this down to change that ramp up. And to help give you a better idea of the adjustments that you're making to multiple segments, you can always look down at the motion display below here, and you can see that these, how these are combined. And again, just keeping in mind that starting down at the bottom is the beginning of our sample. This is the end. So we can see that that adjustment here, when I pull this down, we're only going to play from the beginning uh, to a very small portion of that sample. And we can see that represented here on the waveform. So we're only going to play start here at the beginning of the sample and then move through to this portion. So if we wanted to add another segment, then we can use the insert L or insert R. So if we choose insert L, then we're gonna add another segment to the left here, and this will be pushed to the right. If we wanna add one to the right, then we can choose insert right. Now, if I hold the right mouse button and pull up, then we can see that additional segment. If I click once, we can select that, and it is not included in our loop range. In our loop range, we can see with this overlay down below, but we can click on this handle here and drag that to extend it to be included in our loop range. And if you notice the display, you can see that that updates to give you an overview of the adjustments that you've made here by adding that third segment. If I were to pull this up, you can see in the display down below, we're gonna move more through that sample and more of it will be played back. Now we also have merge controls, so we can merge from the left or to the right here. So if, or we have the last one selected, if I click merge left, then we can see that the segment to the left has been merged with the one on the right there. We can copy and paste different segments. So we would just select the segment that we want to copy and click copy. We can then paste that. We can delete a segment. So while this is highlighted, I can click delete and then that's been removed. We can also adjust the length of our segment here. So if I go ahead and trigger this, and if I take the length down, we can see that that adjusts in the display, but it's also gonna play back quicker now. So as you've seen, we have these handles that we can use to determine uh, what portion of the sample is gonna be played back. So as we move here, this only this portion is gonna be played back. We also have a handle here to the right. So if I pull that in, we can also adjust the length. You can see that that updates there. And we can click and drag on this segment here to change the portion of the sample that's gonna be played back. Now, if I were to go ahead and click the insert R to add another segment to the right here, I'll hold the right mouse button down and push up to zoom out to see both of these. Let's include that in our loop. So when we have multiple segments in the window here, we can use the scale all. So if we'd like to scale all of them at the same time, I can click hold and drag to pull that down and we're changing what portion of the audio is gonna be played back. Clicking on this, we can drag left or right to adjust the length of all at one time. And then we have move all to change the position of the sample playback.
And you can, again, just take note of the display in the motions section here to give you an overview of the changes that you're making. Okay, so this has been a look at the different controls and parameters within the uh, curve editor and also taking a look at our curve presets. Uh, just keep in mind, I chose a basic sample here so we can clearly hear how these are making affecting our sound. But if you were to use more complicated audio material, then you can really achieve some unique sounds and rhythmic soundscape and, and evolving pads, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So go ahead and get lost in this section and experiment with adding segments, uh, making the adjustments here to the playback area, experimenting with the different shapes that you can use, the frequency. So there's a ton of things that you can experiment with here to create unique sounds. So we will wrap up here, and I hope that this series has been helpful to you in learning a bit more about form. Thanks for watching.